What's going on, mobile gamers? Today I'm going to teach you guys how to play NES or Nintendo on your own too. So let's jump in and level up our gaming knowledge. Man, these graphics look great. All right, mobile gamers, we're flashing back to the 90s with some Nintendo or NES on our Odin 2. Today, we're going to be installing NES.EMU to get started. This is my favorite emulator of choice because of all the features that it has. It has per game settings, it has save states, fast forward, it has multiple options to set up your game to look really good on this awesome handheld device. So, it is $5, well, at least $5 Canadian. I don't know how much it is going to be in your country, but it is $4.99 in Canadian. I highly recommend you paying for it. You can get it for free other ways, but let's pay for it and get it installed. Now, again, this application does have awesome features. The very first thing I'm going to do is go over to my file manager. I'm going to go to my external SD card of choice or my SD card, which is the internal SD card. But my external SD card has a folder called NES, a games, and a saves folder. My games are in here, and I have some saves that are already in here as well. Because I've been playing some games, sort of. Now that that's installed, we're going to open it up. The very first thing we're going to do is go to on-screen input setup. We're going to use virtual gamepad to turn it off. We're going to go down to open menu. We're going to turn that to hidden. I will tell you why in a few moments. We're going to go down to... Toggle fast forward, we're going to turn that off. Now this is all up to preference, but I like to turn it off because I'm going to be using a button for fast forward option. And that's about it for that section. Key game put, key gamepad input setup. You're going to scroll all the way down to your device of choice, either the Xbox controller or the Odin controller. I'm going to select my Odin controller for this. You're going to go down to in emulation actions. Now this is your actions like your save states, your load states, your open menu. Open menu is already set to the back button. Save states, I'm going to use my back L2. Fast forward is already set up to R2. I always just like to use it again just to make sure that it's actually connected. And all these other toggles and other options are here for you to actually set up a button. Now click back. Go to gamepad. Now they have it set up to X and A, I like to set it up to Y and B. So that's up to you, but my B is going to be my Y, my A is going to be my B. I know that's confusing, but if you know what the Nintendo controller looks like, the B and the A, I just like it that way. Now click back. Extra functions we don't need to worry about. New profile, that's just basically allowing you to save this as a profile if you want to back it up or store it somewhere. Joystick, X, Y axis as a D-pad. You can turn that on and off. I like to leave it on because sometimes I use my joystick instead of my D-pad. And that's about it for your controller. Go back. Go back again. Now go to options. We're going to set up our video. This is going to be our generic video options for our game. Linear makes the game pop a little bit more with thicker lines. I like to turn that off. It just depends on you, though. If you like a little bit of a thicker line outline for your games, then turn it on. Overlay effect, I like to leave that off, but this is where you can set up to make scan lines on the screen to make it look like an old CRT TV. That's up to you. Overlay or image effect is where we prescale it so that it actually looks good and not blurry on the screen. I use 4X for this device because our device can handle it. Screen shape. This is up to preference. If you want to have a 4x3 aspect ratio, go ahead. I like to fill display. I think it looks good, and that is a personal recommendation for me. All this other stuff you don't have to worry about. Hardware buffer you don't have to worry about either with the, the actual GPU or anything because hardware can handle this like no other. All the way down to default palette. Default palette gives you the option for a couple different palettes here. I like the, the upscaling of this hybrid palette for the FCE UX, but you can change it to the classic palette to make it look like the classic old game it is. But I like this one because it just cleans it up and makes it look really good. Sprite limit, leave it to on. Correct line aspect ratio, I turn that on as well because it makes the screen look proper on this device. Click back. Now go to file paths. File paths are for your saves, your screenshots, your cheats, your patches, palettes, and stuff like that. 
Now we have our disk BIOS here as well. That is just something that you can set up by yourself if you want to. That just basically shows the Nintendo logo at the beginning when you load up your game. I'm going to only show you saves. I'm not doing cheats or anything for you guys today. I find it fun to kind of search that stuff out, so that's up to you. Saves. Go to Content Folder. Select Folder. Now click Select File Location. Go Browse for Folder. Now go to your folder that has your saves in it, and then click Use This Folder. Click Allow. That is about it for the main setup of our app or our emulator. Now, a little bonus that I said I was going to show you in a few minutes. For starters, did you know that Super Mario Bros. 3 was the first game that I ever played on the Nintendo Entertainment System? Don't forget I said that. We're going to click over from our side. We're going to swipe over from our side, that is. Go to our key adapter. We're going to drag a key button all the way up into this right-hand corner. We're going to go to Settings. We're going to turn the transparency to all the way down to off, click dismiss, and then set that button to one of your buttons. I like to set it to my M2. I'm going to click the checkbox. Now, when I click that M2 button, it's going to open my menu. When I click it again, it's going to close my menu. I'm going to show you why I did that. If I click back, click back again, click back again, click back again, this little menu pops up and I sometimes accidentally click yes which closes out the app all together. That's why I set this up for having a little personal menu button with using our awesome key adapter on our Odin 2. Now, we're gonna go to open content. We're gonna select file location. We're gonna select browse for folder. Go to NES and go to games. Click use this folder, click allow. Now, the moment you jump into a game, Another menu is going to show up when you click the back button. That's console options. When you start editing any settings in the console options section for that specific game, like the one I'm going to show you in a few seconds, this will save a configuration file to your saves folder so that when you uninstall the application or anything like that or transfer this to another device with that saves folder, it'll save those configurations for those games. And the reason I'm telling you this is because... Super Mario Bros. 3, when I go into this world, if you see on the right-hand side, keep looking, I'm going to keep showing you, you can see it, there is a problem with the rendering, it's not really a problem, it's actually the way that the game renders by default, but it doesn't look good to me and it bugs the heck out of me, and I'm sure it'll bug you. So, click the back button, go all the way down to where it says crop 8 pixels on the sides, turn that to on. The other thing I'm going to do with this game specifically is go to visible lines, go 8 plus 232, and then I'm going to go back, I'm going to go back again, I'm going to go to options, I'm going to go to video, and then I'm going to content zoom all the way to 112%. Now I think that looks pretty good. And again, this is just a little trick to get the game looking pretty good. It just depends on the game. If you start noticing different flickers like that or different issues like that, then test out those settings to make it look a little bit better than me falling into that hole. Now, I said something about a game that was my favorite game. Well, not my favorite game, but one of my favorite games that I played on the NES. If you remember what that game is, comment what that game is. Down below, you can comment something else with it if you want to. To gain an entry into the Odin 2 Pro giveaway that I'm running right now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, navigate to the video that's in the link in the description below as well. To check that out, don't forget to subscribe. Because I've been sharing a whole bunch of guides for the Odin 2 Pro. And we're almost close to the finalization of setting up your Odin 2 Pro with a lot of the major gaming systems that I myself enjoyed playing throughout the years. Or maybe didn't get to play because I didn't own one. Don't forget, comment what I said. It's very easy, kind of in your face right now, to gain that entry, become a member to gain five extra entries if you want to become a DMG Clan member on the channel as well. Have a nice day, enjoy gaming, 
I think I'm going to go play some Nintendo now on my Odin 2. Bye-bye. Or like I always say. <laughs>